So this morning on the Secrets of the Dam podcast, we're talking a little bit about, about the writing process uh, authors, journalists, uh, different creators go through. Now, why I got involved in the Secrets of the Dam project, Jimmy and I go way back. We were college high school pals in the mid-1980s, and he was one of the, the many people in Carleton County area that encouraged me to seek out a, a strong writing style in my journalism program here at NBCC Woodstock. Now, for, for my pro- process, this morning's podcast is going to talk about the, the different uh, interpretation, different ways you can help uh, the process of writing. For me, uh, uh, I'm mostly a, a journalism uh, writer, reporter, mostly for uh, print weeklies. And in that format, you have to show enough background information about the subject to make it interesting to returning readers, new readers, and potential readers. In my case, I've been very successful. I've worked with great staffs at the Lahousie News, Campton Tribune, Bugle Observer, Brunswick News. And uh, in that case, it's a team approach to writing. You have the reporter, you have the copy editor, many times the editor, the main editor, gives the assignment. Now, where Jim and I differ, Jim creates and conceives uh, all this stuff from scratch. In my case, I might get a something response to an incident in the news, be it sports, entertainment, uh, investigative, whatever. I have to write something that appeals to my readers because of what's going on. But we're going to talk a little bit to Jim today, the, the, the whole process he goes through in relation to the Secrets of the Dam trilogy, especially the Kirk. So, Jim, good morning. Uh, how, how's things going on this great Saturday afternoon? Oh, it's good. It's good. Okay. Now, Jim, we ta- we've talked at length uh, in, in person, not on, a, not on a podcast, about your writing process. Like for, for Secrets of the Dam, the initial c- conception of it, where did it all start? Secrets of the Dam started when I was in college. Uh, a cre- uh, we mentioned this before. It's yeah. a creative writing assignment that we had in class, and I wrote what I essentially thought was a story. Uh, it only really amounted to probably the first 25, 30, maybe 40 pages. But that's a lot of pages when you have to... Of course. <laughs> so I, uh, I thought that was a story in, t- in itself. And I'll get in a little bit later about the actual how I, I tackle a story. Um, and then, of course, I passed it in, and then uh, the, the assignment was that we would, it would everybody in the class would read everybody else's, mm-hmm. and it, we, we were to make a, a constructive critique of the, of the story. And my story, what consistently came back was, where's the rest of it? Uh, and it was like news to me, because I thought I had written a story. Mm-hmm. So then after that, I, just me, I started writing a chapter a, a week or every two weeks for, for the rest of the class, and they would continue to read it. That's how it started. Now, when it comes to my actual writing process, uh, there are other, there are authors that uh, outline things, and mm-hmm. I think that's wonderful. Mm-hmm. I, I can't do that. I never exactly know. I'm like a I'm like my writing journey is like like a like an Aboriginal in Australia when I'm going on a walkabout. I don't know where I'm going. Yep. But I just know I'm going somewhere. Yep. And what happens to me is a story doesn't start in my mind until I have characters that are speaking to me. Mm-hmm. And they ne- they they actually they actually tell the story to me, and I write I write down basically what they say. See, for journalists, we're not writing dialogue. We'll use quotes for direct quotes or second voices, third voices in a story. But in many cases, uh, journalists are not strong at dialogue. Why do you think, Jimmy? That uh, why do you think why do you think, Jimmy? That dialogue is very development is very important to your writing process. My books are dialogue driven. Uh, people say that my characters are, are real mm-hmm. and they're fleshed out and they're totally believable uh, and that's because the, to me they are already are real people mm-hmm. because they, they have personality inside my mind I'm not nuts or anything oh we're all nuts uh, when you're a writer you're always nuts yeah but they do talk to me and tell me what's going on and I uh, I listen to them very intently, and, and I go, oh, yeah. And I'm, I'm basically a witness to what they're saying to me. Now, we always uh, think of a writer, the characters you come up with are based on certain aspects of their personality, their experiences, their loves, their hates. Uh, for uh, the, We talked before about the major characters in the Kirk, and the uh, podcasts on those are available on our channel, JJ Governor Corrier. Uh, now, Jim, your, your character development, uh, are some characters easier to write for in the Kirk and the Secrets of Damn series and others? 
would a would a, a more devilish character be easy easier to write than a than a hero? What's 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 harder and what's uh, easier? Uh let me see. <laughs> because people say that writing for a villain is easier than writing for a hero. It all depends on the villain. Um, I I struggle with with uh, writing horror uh, mostly because uh, you don't see the world that way. Mm -hmm. So it's very difficult for me to plan out someone's because demise. Because you're Baha'i, too, because your, your faith is... Well, that's true, right too. I, I, that, I do find some conflict there, although it is purely just entertainment. I'm not, I'm not uh, pining away, as you say, about doing people in. Mm -hmm. I, I, a villain is an easy character to write for, but I find I always have a character that he's my do-gooder, my moral high ground character. He kind of, he's like the check and the balance. So... God, I want to say that the villain's easy to write for, but I'm thinking in terms of the Kirk and how easy yeah, yeah. how easy Jack was to write. Jack Stevenson. How easy Jack just flowed out, and how easy Susan flowed out, mm -hmm. and Linda Kidney, she just burst off the page at me. So it all it depends on the. I'm going to say it depends on the connection that I have with the character in my mind. Now uh, I go back to my experience appreciating comic book writers. Uh, you look at the Preacher uh, uh, Vertigo series, Wolverine X-Men series. If can you, in your mind, can you visualize the characters when you write them? Do they become literally come come to life yes. in many ways? I draw them. I actually draw. I doodle pictures of them as I'm as I'm working out what they're like. Because once I see them, uh, it's easier to like. I uh, the science fiction series that I wrote, I saw in a series of pictures, and. Once I get the the characters' faces and their mannerisms and all the little oddities that make them who they are, uh, they, it's, they they actually fall into pictures that paint around them. So yes, I see, I visually see them like you would see on the, uh, a movie. See what I really enjoy about the Secrets of the Dam series, especially the Kirk, and we're working on that too, trying to get this developed into a pilot or a miniseries or a big screen movie involving you know predominantly uh, Canadian actors and crew and creators but I see in the Kirk these characters have heart and they have a well, heart in a way that you can you can see them you can feel them you can hear them for as a writer that's what you want to, to find in your readers eh? yes absolutely I want that I those characters I want to connect with the reader Mm -hmm. It's like the 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 reader is is being called, "Hey, buddy, come on, you're my buddy. Let's 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 live this adventure together. Come with me." Uh, that's kind of how I describe the suspension of dis disbelief. I want you to, for the time you're reading it, to believe it's actually happening. Now, a couple of questions we never went over, but uh, you know we're kind of improving here. If you had a young writer in front of you that wanted to to start on this type of book or character development, what would you say to a young writer to encourage whatever skill they were developing? What would you say? Let's say it was a 17-year-old Jim Shaw when I met you first, you were in your late teens. If you could go to a new version of Jim Shaw that wants to get into that, what would you say to that young writer to, to reach their uh, linguistic and, and uh, you know uh, writing goals? Forget what they taught you in school. Uh, right the way true. you talk yeah. if, if because dialogue, you see yeah. Uh, yeah dialogue is very real so s sit in places where, where you hear people talk listen to them talk you got to remember though in a novel dialogue's primary mission is to propel the story drive to plot if the story's not going down the road with this conversation then the conversation isn't needed there are little inroads you can take for oddities that the uh, that they that they do, and they're going to be some sort of frivolous conversations. But you got to remember the the bulk of the dialogue has to propel the story. So sit places and listen to people talk, or even with your friends, listen to yourself talk, and then talk talk your stories out out, out loud. Talk once upon a time. Just shoot the breeze with yourself in a room, and then after you get that, tell your story about ten times to yourself. Then start working it out on paper. I personally, that's how I do it. I, I don't necessarily take a manuscript and then rewrite it again, and then rewrite it again. That doesn't happen with me. When it comes out of the blocks, that's pretty well how it comes. There's a little bit of tinkering that goes, but there's no massive rewrites. Uh, and the editing process, of course, 
you have to get you have to reside yourself to the editing process i would tell any young author though first when you're writing don't worry about spelling mistakes don't worry about See if it's grammatically later, correct yeah. See it later. you do that after the story's done yeah now the second question again one we never went over but you're not a prefab writer like you read the kirk and it seems real you're we talked about anybody can write a harlequin romance and no disrespect to writers of harlequin romance listening to this but i could write a harlequin romance in 20 minutes because it's already prefab or pre-bought it's like these uh, boy bands in the 90s and 2000s you're not a prefab writer well, you, you must take a lot of pride in the fact that you have your own unique style i don't i'm sometimes unaware that i have a style but i do think i have a certain sound uh, or a cadence a cadence yeah. yes in my writing uh, no, my, I don't have any off-the-shelf story, and I don't have any off-the-shelf characters. The, the characters kind of write, write themselves as the story goes. I don't know everything about the character when I'm writing point A to point B and then to point C, but, but during the writing process, I learn these things. But like I said once before, I'm not a sequential writer, so I shouldn't say point A to B. A to I'm, all, I'm all over the place. Sometimes I'm. Sometimes I have written the ending before I've written the beginning. Sometimes I've started with a conversation do, yeah. in the middle of the book. Some do, yeah. And then that starts that starts my mind going in different directions, and then I write these things down. So we're about to wrap up uh, this kind of uh, unofficial tutorial for young readers or young writers or you know uh, older writers and readers of the Kirk. Jim, uh, uh, one last thing to tell our podcast listeners, the best aspect of what you do, the best thing. I actually enjoy, enjoy, enjoy bringing nothing to something, like an idea in my head. That's the cat, by the way. Sorry for that. Uh, an idea. He agrees with Jim. <laughs> idea in my, she's my familiar. Uh, an idea in my mind doesn't exist but yet I bring it I bring it to the real world through paper and now I'm getting the absolute privilege of of seeing the, the the stories that I've written on paper actually come to life that's me saying Nora you're awesome because <laughs> me too I think she's awesome I sit, peace and love to Nora so. I sit in rapture as I listen to her and me and all the characters she brings them all to life and I'm thinking I, I pinch myself and say did I write that seriously it's amazing so again, Jim, thanks so much uh, today for your latest and your series of podcasts. Um, just a reminder, the official uh, Secrets of Dan podcast channel is under my uh, nom de plume, JJ, Governor, G-O-V-E-R-N-O-R, uh, Corrier. And we're reaching a milestone actually this weekend between the, the many Secrets of the Dan podcast and my own podcast of my former movie, sports, TV, editorial, and other columns for Brunswick News most accounts from the Lousy News. We've reached 5,000 page views in the last month and a half, so I'd like to say thank you to all our Secrets of the Dam supporters. Uh, Jim, any one more shout out to Nora because we're still plugging the audiobook she's working on right now. Yeah, uh, um, the audiobook is going to be released uh, in the next month, February. So it's going to be available sometime during the month. We're hoping Valentine's. And I really think you can hear how impressed I am about what she does and what she does is magic you, you really ought to buy the audiobook uh, because you, you're going to be in rapture going down the road or wherever you're going to be listening to true, it true. and the, uh, don't forget uh, that uh, the Kirk is available uh, in the Kindle version on Amazon there will be uh, another printing of the uh, Kirk coming very soon and we also want to remind people that Secrets of the Damned is on Facebook uh, Jim Shaw, he, uh, Jimmy's on uh, Facebook. Mine is JJ Carrier. Uh, drop us a like, a subscribe, a comment. And as we always like to say in Woodstock, it's getting to be our mantra, Peter Kirk. Have ta -ta. a great Ta-ta. Ta-ta, ta-ta for now. The Jimmer says ta-ta. Bye.